Okay. Hello, Aukies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from, uh, let's see, Sheldon Howard W6DM, and he asks this. I have a guest house that's about 75 feet from my wireless modem, which is in a closet in the main house. There's a problem right there. You've got it enclosed. Um, I don't get an internet signal in the guest house, and I can't run a Cat6 cable to the guest house for various reasons. I do, however, have an unused RG6 coax cable running underground from the main house to the guest house. Is there any way I could utilize this coax cable to send a Wi-Fi signal to the guest house? I suppose in an extreme way of doing it, it would take quite a bit of ancillary equipment. You might be able to do it. Here's the problem. Okay, here's the RG6. There is a single cable on the, a single wire on the inside. It's two wires, so you have a center wire and you have an outer shield. So it's, it's unbalanced and you just have this one wire, basically, because the outside is grounded. So you would have to be able to put a signal on here where you'd have two-way uh, things going on. Actually, the way CAT6 cable works is a little different. Let's take this sacrificial CAT6 cable. I think it's actually CAT5U, but it's built the same way. It's a one foot. I don't know why I ordered so many one foot. That's really too short. But let's just cut this off like this. And we're going to uh, split it. Let's get rid of this. We're going to split it down there. Okay, and take a look at what's inside. Okay, this is the standard way for sending internet signals back and forth. There are four pair of wires. See the four pair? Okay. Two pair are not used, and it depends on how you wire these things, which two pair that is. But two pair are used. This, and I'm picking these arbitrarily. This one is for signals running out. This is for signals coming back. Okay, and these two, uh, and I'm, I can never remember what the convention is, but two are not used. Now, what you can do with these, if you've got like a remote radio uh, up on your roof, you can send power to it over one of the unused pairs. And you can use these others for signaling or telephone or something like that. Okay, now notice that they are fairly tightly wound around each other. This gives them an impedance, a characteristic impedance. Each of these are transmission lines of on the order of 100 or so ohms, as opposed to telephone wire, uh, which is not twisted as much or as tightly and actually runs around 600 ohms. Now, the RG8 or RG6 cable is 75 ohms. So here is the problem. You can go one way, you could uh, bring another RG6 cable in there to go back, but if you're going to do that, why not just string the whole cable? You can get that 75 or 100 feet, uh, no problem, and, and there are ways of uh, hooking these up. There are all kinds of instructions on the Internet for how to hook these to cables that look like this. I will warn you, they are a pain to put together. Unless you do them often, uh, it's a pain to put these things in. Okay, I've given up putting these on. I used to run my own wire and then put connectors on. I've given up on that. We use a mixture in the house of wired and wireless uh, for our, uh, uh, our cables. The printer, printers are wireless, but the computers, the main computers are wired. Okay, so um, 
Sheldon, I, I think the thing that I need to tell you is no, that won't work. Well, then the question is, what will work? Okay, there's uh, special things that you can get that are called repeaters. Um, or more commonly, wireless extenders. Okay. Now, what they are is they look like a router with antennas. Okay. But what these do is intercept a, a Wi-Fi signal and retransmit it on a different uh, channel. Okay. So we have one of these in the basement. It can pick up uh, the signal from our upstairs uh, wireless down there, boost it out onto another channel. So if the, if the name of this channel is Wi-Fi, then we would call this Wi-Fi Extend or something like that. And then this is what we actually connect to, and it's rooted in here through this. Now you could put a wireless extender up under your eaves, uh, in a, a window that overlooks the cottage, uh, something like that, and you may find that you can get these, uh, get the wireless in there that you want. Uh, you can always do two wireless extenders uh, over long distance. It's also possible to buy dishes or just simple wireless antennas. Have this one connected to your router, this one connected to a router, or just to a single user out there. And these are $75 to $100 to put these in here, the wireless extender might actually be more expensive. And then this is a permanent two-way uh, internet uh, type of thing. Uh, so, and you can get them for 2.4 or the five gigahertz band. So I do want to offer you some alternatives uh, that will work for that. Don't give up on the question. Okay, so Sheldon, I hope that helps. Uh, and that that will solve your problem for your guests. I know we have a guest network that we use uh, on our router because I don't want to give uh, a guest access to like all the Ask Day videos and everything like that, which are on the home network. Um, and so it, the, the router sets up a special guest network that has access only to the internet. Okay, so there you have it. Please uh, support this channel by going to decastlercom slash support. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, check out Patreon. Uh, check out the tip jar. Um, also, um, click like and share this video. And until we next meet, 73.